ever seen something online that you knew couldn't be real but looked very, very real? It's a form of technology with some tremendously positive applications, but which can be frightening when used with malicious intent. It's referred to as AI-generated synthetic media when it's used for beneficial purposes. When used to deceive, we call them deepfakes. So what is it exactly? Deepfake technology is not just fake, it's generated from artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is automated technology. Machine learning is a subset of AI where processes based on algorithms increase in precision or learn without human intervention. Deep learning is when machine learning uses large data sets to increase precision. For example, in order to generate a deep fake video, thousands of hours of original footage is inputted into an AI system in order to learn how that person moves her head, forms her words, raises her eyebrows, etc. A real life model, so a human being, is used to illustrate to the AI system what to output and the technology applies what it's learned from the original footage to generate a synthetic video or soundbite which appears to be real and which can be so convincing it's near impossible to tell otherwise. Whew, glad that's over. When we refer to deepfakes, we mean the videos and sound bites that are generated from machine learning technology when deep learning is applied. Shallow fakes do not use AI. More about that soon. Perhaps most importantly, deepfake technology is extraordinarily useful given certain contexts and within certain parameters. It has positive applications in matters of accessibility, health, education, the arts, advocacy, and it won't end there. It's helping to improve equity by assisting in the development of tools that can help folks see, hear, and even speak after losing the ability to do so. It can make historical figures come to life for a more engaging lesson. Art venues have brought to life famous artists like Salvador Dali and the subjects of famous works of art like the Mona Lisa. There's an app called Deep Nostalgia which brings your ancestors to life. The soccer player David Beckham spoke nine languages for a campaign meant to end malaria. Beckham is a great soccer player, but he can't speak nine languages without the assistance of AI-generated synthetic media. When the main character in the film Forrest Gump meets JFK and announces that he has to pee, that was done with AI-generated synthetic media. Using AI-generated synthetic media, JFK was brought back to life to deliver a speech he intended to give the day he was assassinated. And Nixon was brought back to life to deliver a speech written in case the astronauts on the Apollo 11 mission didn't make it home. We've talked about the positive implications, which are huge, but when this technology is used maliciously, it can have tremendously negative consequences. A couple of legal scholars, Bobby Chesney and Daniel Citron, write that deep fakes are capable of distorting democratic discourse, manipulating elections, eroding trust in institutions, weakening journalism, exasperating social divisions, undermining public safety, and inflicting hard to repair damage on the reputations of prominent individuals, including elected officials and candidates for office. What's wrong with you? Hmm? There is concern that we will become increasingly more reluctant to believe what we see and hear. And there is evidence that people will act on the disinformation of maliciously derived deepfake technology when it is used to encourage people to believe that they are being deceived. As threatening as deep fakes can be, some folks believe shallow fakes warrant even greater concern. After all, deep fakes require access to certain applications. Apps often cost money. Requiring money often prevents access. Yay for public libraries. Shallow fakes can be anything from selective clipping when words are taken out of context or video content is shown out of context selective splicing, when content is rearranged to convey a different message, content slowed down so someone looks intoxicated or unfocused, or content reframed so that the viewer's perspective is manipulated. It's usually less costly to produce a shallow fake than it is to produce a believable deepfake, as shallow fakes require relatively simple editing software, while deepfakes require access to expensive machine learning applications, or even a team with an advanced skill set in AI. What are some of the ways to combat when this technology is used maliciously? There are a few ways. Social media platforms have implemented flagging options to warn viewers that either what they're viewing has been manipulated, 
may not be truthful or may be wholly inaccurate. Archivists, historians, art dealers, and the like talk a lot about providence. The Society of American Archivists defines providence as one, the origin or source of something, or two, information regarding the origins, custody, and ownership of an item or collection. When it comes to what we see on the web, some methods of determining providence include AI detection technologies, blockchain technologies, web archive technologies like web crawlers, digital watermarks, which embed a unique identifier within the media which reveals itself if that media is edited or manipulated, and canonical archives. There's also the fallback option, a good old fashioned assuming what we see is the truth much less often, especially if we haven't fact checked that content personally. Personally doesn't mean your friend posted it, so it's okay. Personally means you fact checked it, yourself, personally. So how do you fact check something? One way is to go to the source, and one way to go to the source is to visit Fort Bend County Library's Digital Resources and Databases Collection. Opposing viewpoints in context is a great way to get multiple perspectives on an issue. If we type the word deep fake into the search bar, we see that the database retrieves viewpoints, references, videos, audio clips. Let's look at the one titled, Why Facebook is Banning Highly Manipulated Deep Fake Videos. It's a broadcast transcript from All Things Considered, published by National Public Radio Inc., or NPR. And it even gives us an option to cite the resource at the bottom in case we want to share it online or in a paper. We have magazines that come up and articles in the news. And the database references articles out of academic journals. So not only are there multiple perspectives, there are multiple sources to choose from on any given topic. Thanks for watching. Your library staff at Missouri City Branch Library hopes you're staying cool this summer. Come see us sometime and get a library card if you don't already have one. Those library cards are handy. Shh.